Today's podcast is brought to you by Quantrix Modeler Introductory Training, teaching the fundamental foundation that you need to become a Quantrix Master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Show me, show me, show me how you do Quantrix. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I think it's fantastic that you joined me for episode number 237 because I'm going to unlock a mystery for you today. It's a mystery that I have struggled with, but I have cracked the code on how to filter data on a data link from a CSV file in Quantrix Modeler. I have here a Quantrix model and I have a matrix that is going out to a CSV file and you can see that by going to data data link editing data link and you can see that I am selecting a delimited text file and it's going out to this place on my drive for the longest time I've wondered how can I filter this data it's not like I can write a select statement and have a where clause and have it filtered out but let's say I don't want all of these records in my my data that I'm using I want to be able to filter them out and consume only the records that I care about further down in my model. How can I do that? Let me show you how you can do that right now. I have here a matrix. I'm going to call it my filters matrix and I want to only bring in to my analysis those items that are central and those items that are first class. I'm going to first go to the sales orders matrix and on the row category I'm going to hit enter and add a new category. The L1 category I'm going to call raw data or the raw uh, the L1 item, I'm going to rename it and call it raw data. Then I'm going to enter another category and call uh, L2 filter data. And as I re if I were to delete all these records here and re-import the data, right, I would see that raw data is the one that is being populated from my data link that is going out to my delimited text file or my CSV file. I want filtered data to only populate when the raw data meets this certain criteria. So I am going to, before I get into that, I'm going to rename category L data type and then I'll work on that filter. So I'm going to say that filtered data data equals if my raw data region is equal to my region here and I'm going to go to my next line and hit and percent hashtag and hashtag and my ship mode of raw data so raw data ship mode is equal to my filters uh, filters filter data uh, filters uh, ship mode filters if, if that is the case, if that is true, then I want to bring back my raw data. Otherwise, I want to bring back nothing. And let's see if I can't get that correct. And I'll just put a space in there and we are good. So now if I go here to my data and I look for anything that has central in it, that's a candidate because my region is central, but it also has to be first class. So you can see that if it is first class and it is central, then my filtered data indeed populates. But if it is central and it is not first class, then my filtered data does not populate. So there very easily I've created this filtered data set that will change based off of what my filters are here in so much as I'm only wanting to filter on region and ship code. If I wanted to uh, filter on maybe, you know, maybe my category or something like that, I could go ahead and add that item category. And then I would need another, add another hashtag and hashtag here to the start of my if statement and, and build out this similar logic for that. But for this example, uh, continuing on, I now have filter data for only central and first class based off an entire data set that I brought in from a CSV file. Now if I want to summarize that over here in this summary matrix, I would simply say sales is equal to the sum of sales orders. Yeah, let me just click on it. It's equal to the sum of sales orders sales, right? 
filter data. And I'm going to throw a basic using as here using my subcategory, which is here or here. My subcategory of uh, my filter data is equal to my subcat or as subcategory here. And when I do that, I'm now going to uh, see the correct result and I can verify this by going up to central, filtering on central, then going to first class within that filtered set and filtering on it. And then I'm going to actually sort this by my uh, subcategory. I also want to bring my data type up here and I want to look only at filter data. So I'm going to select filter data. And then if I go ahead and I sum, say what my boots are, I should see 1452. I see 1452. If I look at helmets, I should see 552 because that's all I have. And again, I see 552. What about something that's duplicated? I see tents here. I've got 2874. What am I showing over here for tents? 2874. So what I've done is I've created another category on my 2D data matrix. I have the raw data that is being populated from the data link and my additional item that I've created, which is filter data. I have it only populating where certain criteria of the raw data are met against these filters here. And then uh, with my summary, I'm doing a, really a basic using as, and I'm only summing those items or looking at those items that are on filtered data. So I think this is awesome because I've wondered for a long time, how can I query or how can I limit uh, the data that I'm using when I'm pulling it from a CSV file. I don't want to have to manipulate my CSV file in that lesser program known as Excel and have to keep track of it that way. I want to have it all in-house uh, within uh, my Quantrix model and then I want to be able to filter it from there. But I don't want to have to use a bunch of select statements with a bunch of flying keys or a bunch of using as's. How do you do that? Well, I just showed you how you can do it by simply creating a category and creating another item called filter data and applying the logic that I've shown you. I love Quantrix. I want to make you a Quantrix master. So I hope that you will join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez.